Hello everyone, my name is Nikhil Handigold. I'm a co-founder of Forward Networks. And today I'm going to talk about AI. We are in 2024, so we all talk about AI. And in particular, I'm going to talk about how we are integrating the power of generative AI with the digital twin. So Mike just spoke about how Forward has become this common data analysis platform with some of the most unique and some of the most comprehensive data about the network infrastructure. We're talking about switches, routers, load balancers, firewalls, on-prem, in the cloud, and we also have an ability to integrate with external sources, so we can pull in data from other adjacent tools and systems. And we collect all of this data and we analyze all of this data. So it's, it's a data analysis platform that can then solve problems for multiple teams within the organization, multiple stakeholders within the organization. We're talking about the network team, talking about the security teams, talking about the cloud teams, app teams, uh, compliance and audit teams, as well as the upper management. So uh, this is 2024. Uh, this is the era of uh, ChatGPT, AI, and when we see data, the first thing that comes to mind is what is the role of AI in this? How does AI fit into all of this, in particular, generative AI? So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We are super excited about the opportunity of integrating AI capabilities with the digital twin capabilities for, for a particular reason. One is that the high level opportunity that we see here is the ability to combine broad general capabilities of AI with very deep and specific knowledge that the digital twin has about the network. And remember, the digital twin knows about everything in the network, it connects to all the devices, it has this comprehensive model of the network. It understands every possible behavior that each network device as well as the whole network end-to-end -end can exhibit. It knows about every possible path that any possible packet could ever take through the network. This is very deep and specific knowledge about a particular customer's network. Whereas if you look at AI uh, and, and generative AI, large language models in particular, they have very broad and exciting general capabilities. So now the, the opportunity here is to combine that broad capability with this deep specific knowledge and what can that unlock. In fact, uh, I'm going to take this a step further. In fact, we believe that the digital twin is going to be the key enabler for AI in uh, networking and security. And I say this because of two reasons. One is data. AI systems are only as good as the data that they're built on, uh, as good as the data that they have access to. And the digital twin has some of the most comprehensive data about the network. It knows about every device, every host, every cloud. It knows about all the configuration and state that it collects from the network. It knows about every IP address, MAC address, VLAN, VRF, security zone. It knows about all the vulnerabilities that are present on the network devices as well as because it knows about all the traffic paths, it also knows about all the exposures uh, that these vulnerable systems have. So imagine what can, what can be achieved when we, we build an AI system that, that can have access to this kind of data. So data is one aspect. Uh, the second aspect, I think this is uh, probably something that is kind of uh, overlooked quite a bit, uh, but it's probably more crucial is trust. And it's, it's not uncommon these days to see nice, uh, cool demos, exciting demos about AI capabilities, uh, right? And, uh, and many of them actually now make suggestions. Hey, uh, uh, I see if you make suggestions to make uh, configuration changes, to block traffic, to uh, improve the configuration and so on. And so the, the question is, how do I trust what the AI system is saying? How do I trust it enough to actually go ahead and take action on that suggestion on my mission critical network? This is going to be a big, big problem or a big challenge with AI in general, but in particular when applied to mission critical infrastructure like the network, right? How do I ensure that this AI suggestion has the right effect? That it doesn't break any critical application flows. If I go ahead and go ahead and apply the configuration change that the AI system is suggesting, Will it actually cause application flows to be disconnected? Or the, the flip side, right? So it, it doesn't violate compliance or doesn't increase risk or doesn't increase exposure to bad actors out there. And again, 
the digital twin technology is going to be a key factor in bringing that trust to the table. Because what the forward digital twin has is one of the capabilities has its, its validation. So there's ability to validate that the network is behaving as it is intended to be. Now that is going to be a key component to making these AI systems practical and actually deployable with trust. I have a question for you. Yeah. So earlier we heard that the agent was deployed on-prem and it used SSH and was read-only. It wasn't writing back to the devices. But now you're talking about trust to be able to make changes to the devices. So is that something, the ability to write back to the devices, something that's coming? And is the goal a self-healing network? I think that's the, the long-term goal that, that not, not just us, but I think, I think the whole world has been envisioning. Like a self-healing network, a self-driving network. This has been a long-standing dream. Right, and there are three key components to this. One is an ability to understand what's there, and two, an ability to, based on that knowledge and understanding, so that is what Forward does today, that knowledge and understanding component, and based on that knowledge and understanding, be able to take the next steps, or uh, think up the next steps, come up with the next steps to take. I mean, if, if it's a new vulnerability, how do I block access to it, uh, as an example, or if an application flow is, uh, uh, is disconnected, how do I enable that connectivity? And this is this is one of the promises of AI, that uh, AI, uh, if not now, sometime in the future, uh, would, would be an enabler for uh, suggestive corrective actions of that kind. But then the third component is trust. You need to be able to trust what it is saying enough so that you can actually go ahead and either for human beings to take action or for smart software to take action on that suggestion. And, and that trust is a crucial factor that is going to decide whether we can have those self-healing networks or self-driving networks. So it's, it is in the long-term vision uh, for everyone out there, uh, but uh, we need to understand what does it take to get there. So an intermediary step is to have recommendations that forward networks would recommend this change based upon what it found through the analysis of the issue. Is that built in today? Is it something you're working on? Uh, that is something that we are working on. I'll talk about what we are uh, working on today, uh, what we have actually launched. And then, so we are working on, uh, uh, one step at a time. But uh, I, yeah, I fully expect that, again, not too distant in the future, uh, we will be uh, in a position where we'll be able to make recommendations with high confidence. Okay, thank you. So uh, with that, thank you for the lead. Uh, with that, I'm going to talk about what we have, uh, <laughs> uh, what, what we have just launched, what we are working on. <laughs> Uh, so we just uh, recently launched uh, our first generative AI power feature in the product called AI Assist. So uh, what is AI Assist? So before I talk about that, I'll talk about uh, a very powerful uh, feature in the product called NQE, Network Query Engine. So, uh, and then we'll talk about AI Assist because it's very closely tied to this. So the problem uh, that we are addressing here is that of data, access to data. Uh, network, net ops teams, sec ops teams, audit teams constantly need data about the network. As an example, network teams constantly need to understand and put together reports about what do I have in the network. And Michael is going to talk more about what do I have in the network in the in the next uh, session. But what do I have in the network? What do I? What devices do I have? Who are the vendors? What versions do I have? Which of them are end of life, end of uh, end of support? Which of them uh, are uh, vulnerable, right? Uh, or what interfaces do I have? How many of them am I using? So it's, it's, uh, that's an example of constant inventory data that uh, the network teams need to put together. Uh, audit teams, for example, need to, again, uh, put together, need data to put together reports to prove to their auditors that the network configuration is in compliance with the requirements, with the regulations. The problem is the traditional way of doing this data collection and reporting has been manual. It's traditionally been human beings who actually log into these devices, run those show commands, and you get, the, get those outputs in formats that are very specific to uh, those vendors who have created those uh, devices, extract the pieces of data, put together the report. Super manual, super cumbersome. It uh, can take anywhere from days, weeks, to months, and some of the low priority things never get done because it just takes forever, right? Some of the more sophisticated ones have actually turned to automation. Okay, so rather than humans doing all of this work, you would write scripts, like Python scripts, for example, that would do the same thing. 
like you log into the device, write a script that can log into the device, run those commands, extract the data, and again parse that information. Uh, that could be in vendor specific format, uh, right? Extract those information, so they have these vendor specific parsers, extract the data, put together a report. And again, super cumbersome, just you still need people to write those scripts, right? Uh, the whole process has been very, very painful and not scalable and requires dedicated resources. And our customers came to us and said, hey, but you have this data already. You collect all of this information, you have this information available in a parsed and normalized format. Why don't you give us access to that directly? And that's what led us to create NQE, Network Query Engine for short. So NQE, what is NQE? NQE basically provides access to this parsed and normalized data about uh, the network via a simple query language. So now, uh, the, the, the new way of accessing network data is as if you're just querying a database. As simple as writing a query that looks very similar to a SQL query. So what used to take months, weeks or months before has come down to the, how much of our, uh, time it takes to write a query. Uh, depending on the expertise, it can be minutes or maybe a couple of hours. Right? So super exciting because it's, it's, it's made the whole process streamlined. It's super easy to consume and report on. Now we are taking this one step further with AI. We have uh, launched uh, a new feature called AI Assist for NQE. AI Assist is basically a natural language interface to NQE. So instead of now, uh, so making this a step easier, instead of having to create this query, having to uh, instead of having to craft this query in in a language that looks like SQL. The user can just type out in plain English what they want from the network. And AI Assist generates the NQE query, which they can either use directly or maybe make some final uh, minor tweaks to get to where they want and run that on the data. Uh, so this is, the idea here is what used to take, again, before NQE, what used to, the task that used to take weeks or months came down to about an hour or so with NQE. It's down to seconds now with AI Assist. So, um, sorry, John Herb. Yeah. Uh, are you saying it is literally, because I can't quite see all the text. I am going to show a demo of this. Is it literally generating the NQE query for you? So rather than saying, rather than kind of chat ops, where it's like, please tell me what's going on, and it gives you an answer, yeah. but you really don't know if the query it asked was correct, right? We're back to the trust thing. Um, so this is generating the query that you can then either say, sure, go execute that, or you can put it into your tools, just use it as a way to quickly generate templates and stuff. Spot on, spot on, absolutely. Because, okay, cool. because again, trust is a big factor, right? I mean, how do, how do I know that the, the model that is actually uh, operating on your natural language query has got it, has got what right. was in my mind? And you need that level of trust. And then that level of trust comes from the query that is exposed directly to you. So you know exactly what the system is going to run. And if you need to make tweaks from there, again, you, uh, you're almost there. Maybe you can make a minor, uh, few minor tweaks if, if the system didn't quite get, or if I failed to communicate exactly what I wanted. Right, and, and that's, that's especially, we were talking about this actually, I was talking with someone about this yesterday and saying one of the problems with chat ops is we have people from all around the world working in our companies and the, the ability to communicate exactly what you want precisely is not always successful. And that can lead to all sorts of misunderstandings, which will then translate into the query. So at least if you can see what you're doing here, which is great. It's not even about the people. It. Yeah, it's not even about the people. It's, it's, I think it's a fundamental constraint with English or natural language, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not precise. You can, you, can con you can convey the same thing in multiple ways and not necessarily be precise uh, with respect to what you have in your mind. I suppose that this runs in English only? For now, yes. For now, okay. <laughs> I mean that. Obviously, we, you know, most of us, many companies, offsource, you know, outsource. So, yeah, you know, maybe having a natural language query in a native language might be even more powerful. Yeah, uh, and I think I think it's just a matter of technology catching up. Again, we have not yeah. explored this from our end. Maybe maybe uh, we just add a translation layer from any language to English, or 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 maybe just this works out of the box. We don't know. We have not tried it out yet. Why haven't you done everything already? Okay, hurry up. <laughs> A great question, yes, thank you. Question, um, is this a model that uh, you guys developed or open sourced or grabbed some you know, model? There's several out yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, so uh, <clears throat> I think like most uh, uh, modern custom 
uh, generative AI capabilities, uh, what we have done is uh, adopted something similar. So we've taken a state of the art model and we have taught it how to generate in QE. So we have fine tuned that uh, and, and, and layered a lot of other techniques on top to make it generate in QE because again, there's not a lot of NQE data out there. Uh, so it's, uh, so just uh, a model out of the box will not be able to do this. So we've had to do a lot of custom work on top of it uh, in terms of fine tuning and, and prepping it to be able to do this task. So one other question. Um, so, so far we've talked a lot about reactive. Is there anything proactive that does alerting uh, if there's an issue? And if so, what methods does it use for the alerting? Does it use SMS, Kafka bus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, we we do have. I mean, like the the goal is to make our product help be uh, help network operators be more proactive. And one of the ways we do this is focusing again on NQE. So NQE uh, comes with a library of queries that that are shipped with the box out of the box, and these are all these all can be enabled. And these are basically queries that we have created based on our learnings from our customers on the problems and the landmines that they have seen and the problems that they have experienced as a result of that. So forward proactively checks for these based on the queries that we, again, so basically problem experienced by one customer, but then now we have a proactive check for everyone out there. So, so that's one way that we are making this proactive. And in terms of notification, we have several mechanisms for notification. Right now, uh, what the platform supports is uh, is primarily email and uh, and in-app notification and webhooks. So webhooks is a very general mechanism. So you can now have a system and then tie it out to any other platform that uh, that you care about. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I will now uh, jump into a demo. Um, Nikhil, before you do the demo, I have one of my other big three questions, because he already asked one of them. How do you deal with hallucinations in the uh, model? Yeah. Does it ever return data that is fake and accurate? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, uh, very good question. I think this is, this is going to be, uh, this is another general challenge with uh, networking. And two things, one is, uh, one of the things I mentioned is, it's not just uh, a model that we have where we ask a question and get a response back. We have a lot of other capabilities that are layered to make this practical, and one of them is to make sure that the system never returns an invalid query. <clears throat> Again, because uh, so once uh, the the model uh, responds back, there is an intermediate layer that we have that validates that this is what is generating uh, so the the query that is generated generated is actually valid. And ultimate, I think the ultimate scrutiny is like for the user. So the user gets to see what is the query that was that is being generated. So they're not getting an answer, they're getting a query that they can then execute to get the answer. The user can always look at the query to see what the query is doing. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. thank you. Okay, back to the forward UI. And this time I'm going to go into NQE. Uh, this is the NQE library. Uh, on the left side you see uh, a whole bunch of queries. But this time I'm going to demo AI Assist. I have a, a simple natural language query here. Uh, this is the uh, NQE query editor. And let me collapse this. Let me shrink this. Let me increase the font size a little bit here. OK. Within NQE, I can uh, click AI Assist and type in plain English what I want. I've just copy pasted something that I had here. Write a query to find all devices and interfaces that have an IPv6 address configured on a bridge. In English, something that I might care about. I hit generate query, and within seconds, it generates a query that matches that intent. It iterates over all the devices in the network, over all the interfaces, and checks if the interface is a bridge. And if it's a bridge, then <coughs> It iterates over all the IPv6 addresses configured on the bridge and reports all of them. This is what I asked for, and I got the query, which I can then go ahead and execute on the net. There is another feature in the product uh, that is, uh, there's another feature of AI Assist that I'm also going to dis uh, describe. This is called Summary Assist. This is the exact inverse of what query generation is. It takes a query, 
and generates a natural language summary of what the query is doing. Now, why is this interesting? Why is this useful? Because NQE has quickly become a team sport for our customers. We now have teams of network engineers or security engineers who are creating and maintaining repositories of NQE queries. So when you as a team member set out to write a query, the first thing you want to do is see if uh, any of your teammates has created something and if they've created something, build on top of it or either just borrow it. The first thing you need to understand when you look at a query that, you, that was not created by you is uh, what is it doing? What is this query? A quick, a quick understanding of a query helps a lot in making fast progress. And that's what summary assist helps with. So here's, here's a query that someone has written. I don't know what it is, but I can, I can here quickly click generate summary to see what the query is doing. So this NQE query verifies that connected Ethernet interfaces have descriptions. It focuses on physical Ethernet interfaces that are connected to another device. So that's what it's doing. So it's basically checking that interfaces that, have, that are actually connected actually have descriptions because this is a requirement that I have. This and feels like Google Translate where, you know, you get your translation and then the yeah. smart money says, now flip it and see if it translates back to what you yeah. thought it should. Yeah, exactly. Precisely. I like that. Yeah. In the NQE, is there like a repository for all these queries that have been built by the team and that's kind of where you're yeah. pulling that from? Yeah, so this is the, this is uh, on the left okay, side, you see yeah. a repository of all the queries. Uh, includes those that are uh, part of forward library, those, are, those that are shipped by forward out of the box, as well as those that were uh, created by the customer for, for their own uh, use cases. Right, uh, with that, I'm going to uh, end my presentation. Any other questions? Yeah, quickly, and the, yeah. The, um, this looks super powerful for things like change management and network validation. Um, so outside of the individual queries, do you have the ability to say bundle queries where, you know, we do this type of change and then we run these type of specific checks where, you know, I don't have to go pick 10, 15 different queries, but I can pick like a bundle specific yeah. to the change that I made? Absolutely. So what, so query is one part, which is extracting the data, mm -hmm. but what this translates to also is, is checks. Mm -hmm. So you can use this data and actually run checks to make sure, I mean, get a pass fail. Uh, based on these queries. And these are called NQE checks. I'll show it to you in the platform. Uh, under verify, we have something called NQE checks, where each of these queries, uh, a subset of these queries are taken okay. and are turned on as checks. So when the user wants to run, a, run through a change management workflow, they can pick and choose which of these queries okay. form your verification bundle that you can then run through the process. Okay, that's awesome, thank you.